Tokyo Gas Group has been supplying city gas for 130 years. The natural gas that city gas is made from is one of the most environmentally friendly fossil fuels. It is cooled to minus 162 degrees Celsius, so it can be transported to Japan in the form of liquefied natural gas, LNG. LNG is unloaded and stored in tanks at four terminals. The LNG is turned back into a gas and odorized to make city gas. This is delivered via pipelines to 11 million customers in the greater Tokyo area, providing the energy that keeps homes, offices, and society going. The Supply Control Center controls the production and supply of gas. In the event of an emergency, such as a gas leak or accident, Gaslight 24 is dispatched to the scene in response. When there's an earthquake, intelligent gas meters and seismometers, called SI sensors, automatically shut off the gas supply. The Supply Control Center ascertains the state of damage in five minutes and can also shut off gas supplies remotely. If gas service is interrupted, arrangements are in place to enable gas utilities around the country to cooperate on recovery work to restore service as soon as possible. We have the most contracts of any of the new power producers and suppliers who have entered the fully deregulated electricity retail market. We are developing smart energy networks using cogeneration systems and promoting the wider adoption of any farms to help protect the environment and save energy too. We are also committed to developing our liquid gas business, residential services, engineering services, and urban development services, and to expanding our operations overseas. Continue to expect the best from Tokyo Gas Group as we deliver energy to bring new light into people's lives and communities. Welcome to DMG Events Digital Session Defining Japan's LNG and Gas Agenda to Achieve its 2050 Net Zero Target. It is great to see so many people connected to join us today from all corners of the globe. We have an excellent session coming up and I'd like to thank our host sponsors, Jira and Tokyo Gas, sponsors Chenier Venture Global LNG and King & Spalding, and our supporter IEEJ for their support. With Prime Minister Suga committing to net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050, Japan is set to implement bold and effective decarbonisation measures as a pillar for its growth strategy. We are seeing greater LNG usage through power and shipping and further international partnerships being formed to develop a hydrogen supply chain. This session will look at how key players are adapting their strategies in the drive for decarbonisation. And I'd like to thank our speakers and session chairs for joining us and sharing their insights today. Thank you as well to the audience, many of whom have sent their questions in advance. These have been shared with the session chairs who will do their best to answer them in the time that we have. Finally, we look forward to meeting in person for the fourth Japan LNG and Gas Summit on the 15th to the 17th of February 2022 in Tokyo which will feature the return of our full live conference in addition to the new Hydrogen and Ammonia Day. We really look forward to reconvening the industry then. And now, without any further ado, I'm delighted to hand over to Mr. Nobuo Tanaka, Special Advisor at the Sasakawa Peace Foundation. 
Thank you, Tanaka-san. Thank you, Tadia. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Nobuo Tanaka, uh, and uh, former executive director of the IEA, International Energy Agency. Thank you for letting me to make an opening statement today. Um, when I was the executive director of the IEA, IEA publicized the World Energy Outlook Special Edition titled, Are We Entering a Golden Age of Gas? Yeah, that was 2011, 10 years ago. My question today to all of you is, are we still in a golden age of natural gas? The shale revolution was the main reason for the golden age of the gas. The high price of oil uh, brought lower and stable supply of uh, gas in the United States uh, as associate gas. And it is so cheap that it switches uh, power sector from coal to gas substantially. And the CO2 emission has been reduced substantially in the United States. Um, so in a way, golden age of gas suddenly happened in the United States. And it uh, will make the United States the largest exporter of the LNG in the future, while China is the largest importer of the LNG. North America share revolution and LNG trading help Asian economic growth with cleaner fuel and supply security with market-based pricing. This is a great achievement of the share revolution. But the issue is now the COVID-19. Last year, the COVID hit the energy sector by once in 100 years scale. 30% um, of global oil demand disappeared by lockdowns. IEA's Fatty Bill said it was black April for oil. Other fossils and nuclear also declined. The sole winner was renewable. COVID-19 accelerates the energy transformation and I was surprised to hear that Fatih is optimistic about the transformation, saying, today I am more optimistic than ever about the world's ability to reach the goals of Paris Agreement. Even the 1.5 degrees seems less uh, remote than it did a year ago. Will peak demand of oil happen? Future demand oil depends on the recovery from the COVID-19. Um, this is the 2019's uh, stated policy uh, scenario of the IEA World Energy Outlook. Because of the COVID, it, it declines substantially in 2020. But when the recovery comes, delays, this is the case. But in either in 2022 or 2027, they will the oil demand will come back to the level of 2019. Peak demand will not happen without a larger shift in policies. And that is what sustainable development scenario means. In, in the case before the COVID crisis, 23 trillion dollars of present value is what oil and gas producers could see. However, the COVID uh, pandemic uh, has already reduced this amount by about a quarter, mainly because of the lower, lower outlook for prices and strengthening of the policies for sustainability, reduce emission, and would bring this number down even further to 12 trillion US dollars, even though it is a big number. Bloomberg intelligence predict ex exiting of oil by major oil companies. European oil majors move faster than American uh, rivals or Middle East or Russian corporations. Is gas, Still, a transition 
or bridge fail. Yes, it is the likely scenario tells us it grows positive toward 2040. But on the other hand, if sustainable development scenario happens, the net negative growth means declines. And CCS is definitely needed to continue to stay for gas. Another call by the IEA for sustainable gas is reduction of methane leakage, which is now observed from the satellite. And Russia and the United States are leading sources of leakage. We have to address this issue. A new shock wave by the IEA recently, the report of net zero emission by 2050. Fatih said, energy sector should stop all new oil and gas exploration project um, by this year, if carbon neutral happens by 2050. Between 2020 and 2050, demand for coal for falls by 90%, oil by 75%, and gas by 55%. Energy security risk may increase because of Lots of concentration happens to OPEC or Middle East producers. In Japan, Prime Minister Suga declared carbon neutral by 2050 for Japan last of October. It's a great surprise, but METI revealed Japan's energy pass to carbon neutral in December. And this screen shows 100 degree change of Japan's energy and climate policies. Further 46% reduction of CO2 was announced by Prime Minister Suga. To achieve carbon neutral by 2050, METI prioritized 14 sectors. And it is called new industrial policy of METI. And hydrogen is a focal point. Fuel ammonia, hydrogen for industrial sectors and power sector. Nuclear reactor could be used, fuel cell vehicle, ships, aircraft. Japan has led hydrogen economy and transformation by Toyota's Mirai, the fuel cell vehicle. But recently, we are overtaken by Europe and China. So this is the manifest of Japan returning to the leadership role in hydrogen. A golden age of hydrogen is now coming. Energy transformation by hydrogen may force Japan to change its very successful business model of LNG trading. Japan started importing LNG 50 years ago to replace oil as a cleaner fuel. In the near future, Japan may need to switch from LNG to hydrogen through ammonia, organic hydrate or liquid hydrogen uh, transported from Middle East, Australia, and the United States. Green hydrogen or blue hydrogen with CCS will prevent stranded acetization of exporters resources, as well as helping Asian growing economies for transformation, especially in the hard to abate sectors. Well, ladies and gentlemen, my conclusion today is that a golden age of gas continues as a clean source for hydrogen or ammonia. Thank you very much. Let's now move to the first session. Session one is uh, the outlook for Japan's LNG and gas development strategy. Yes, everybody knows Japan is a leading uh, country of importing LNG and we have 50 years of history of using it as a cleaner source uh, for the Japanese uh, power company or gas company and so on. And we have a challenge for the sustainability in the future. Where the demand of Japan's LNG uh, going, uh, we have 
the government uh, uh, representative, uh, uh, major research institute person, and a uh, player of uh, Tokyo Gas and JERA, uh, as well as uh, the uh, players of exportation from US Chenier, as well as uh, Venture Global LNG. So uh, first, let's listen to uh, uh, Mr. Soda, uh, the director of oil and gas division of METI. Mr. Soda, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Tanaka-san. Hi, everybody. I'm Takeshi Soda, Director of Oil and Gas Division of METI. As an icebreak, I'd like to explain the uh, concept of Japan's support for energy transition in Asia, which was just announced this Monday by our Minister Kajiyama. As you know well, Prime Minister Suga declared carbon neutrality goal by 2050 and 46% greenhouse gas reduction in 2030. As to the background of energy transition in Asia, I want to touch upon the current trend of climate change discussions. First, the World Bank and several European financial institutes have already announced their tough stuff, tough stance on fossil fuel financing. What surprised me most was the ADB's draft version of energy policy, which released in early May. ADB plans to stop financing oil and natural gas field exploration and coal fired capacities. In addition, ADB plans to limit its finance on gas fired power plants under the very limited conditions. Second, based on the EU taxonomy, the criteria for gas fired power plants are so strict that almost all gas fired power plants would be classified as not sustainable. Third, the US announced its financial policy last month the U.S. will seek to end international investments in and support for carbon-intensive fossil fuel-based energy. U.K. also announced that it will no longer provide support for fossil fuel energy sector overseas from March 31st. Fourth, I'd like to let you know very important fact that the fact carbon neutrality goal has been changed recently from by 2070 to by 7, 2050, due to the aggressive pressure from the US and European countries. This means that all countries, including developing countries, have to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. However, to be frank with you, I believe that this should be unrealistic, especially in Asia. There are three reasons. First, while energy demand in Southeast Asia grew by 60% from 2018 to 2040, fossil fuels still present about 80% of total energy demand in 2040. Second, the potential for renewable energy is not so big in Asia. Potential areas for renewables such as solar and wind are unevenly distributed and limited. Third, as renewable energy fluctuates in daily and seasonally basis, it needs some amounts of adjustable power sources, such as thermal power plants. From the viewpoints of energy resilience or energy stability, Asian countries will definitely have to rely on fossil fuels even in 2050. In this perspective, at the ASEAN Plus 3 Summit last November, Prime Minister Suga declared that Japan will fully support a realistic and sustainable energy transition in Asia. Here, the important word is realistic. So what shall we do? In order to avoid strong pressure from EU or environmental NGOs, and also to attract ESG investments or private finance, I believe that each ASEAN countries had better declare carbon neutrality, even though they don't have to set the target year and then draw its own roadmap towards carbon neutrality. We, Japan, will support projects and activities designated in the roadmap. This is the core concept of Asian version of transition finance. In addition, area, this is the Economic Research Institute for ASEAN, is now drawing a draft of roadmap for each ASEAN country. 
which would be most helpful for them to draw it by themselves. This is just a sample of an ASEAN country. Based on the cost minimization approach, the cheapest energy source and technologies will be introduced first, followed by more ex expensive ones. Among these tools, I believe that conversion to gas in the middle part would be the most effective and realistic to reduce greenhouse gas in Asia. Asia Energy Transition Initiatives, we call AT, which provides a variety of support for various and realistic, realistic energy transition in Asia. Our support tools are as follows, finance, technology development support, capacity building, and knowledge sharing. Finally, I'd like to share our plan and schedule. We are now coordinating with ASEAN Secretariat to have a special ASEAN and Japan energy ministers in late June. Then we are going to disseminate the core concept of realistic energy transition among like-minded countries such as the US, Australia before COP26 in November. Thank you very much. Thank you, Soda-san. Uh, very, very interesting. Um, especially you explained about this new initiative of Asian Energy Transition Initiative. It certainly make very good sense how to make, uh, uh, let's say, uh, decarbonization in the very hard to abate sectors in growing Asia is a key element, which IEA has been saying. Um, and uh, I think uh, uh, you you mentioned the let's say conversion to gas is a very important uh, way to for the uh, achieving uh, this uh, transition. So 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 what do you do? You have any specific idea of the role of LNG in this uh, uh, Asian energy transition? Yeah, I believe that you know as I said, conversion from the coal power plants to gas power plants would be the most effective. Uh, and realistic for the uh, energy transition in Asia. Because uh, at least the major Asian countries, if these you know, coal power plants in these major Asian countries converted to the gas power plants, it's gonna be almost uh, eight, eight, 860 million ton uh, CO2 will be reduced, which will be more than 70% of total greenhouse gas emissions of Japan. So it will be huge impact if you know uh, coal power plants to change to the gas power plants. And in addition, as you know, as I explained, you know the coal power plant is is already uh, very difficult to get any financial support from the uh, ADB or like uh, private finance. However, gas fire power plant is still thinked as a, like a traditional energy, and we Japan think. It, it's a very important technology to support the Asian tradition in Asia. So we uh, will support this kind of conversion in Asia. In that sense, we believe LNG will be the core of the energy transition in, Japan, in Asia. Thank you. So you are going to use the kind of transition finance uh, to achieve this kind of target. And I, I, I remember that World Bank is now th thinking that uh, the gas could be utilized if necessary for reducing the CO2 emission um, as a, you know, uh, as a, uh, especially for the uh, Asian uh, countries. But this finance is another important element. Uh, uh, and how do you proceed uh, in the future to uh, engage? with ministers, ASEAN countries, you have that com uh, conference or using the Japanese uh, banks or ADB. Is there any uh, uh, proposal or steps you are thinking about? Yeah, actually, you know, uh, as I said, uh, in a special Japan and ASEAN energy ministerial in the late June, we're gonna discuss about the, this concept of the Asian uh, energy transition finance issues. And then what would be the principle or criteria will be uh, discussed in that conference. So, and also uh, we're gonna you know, form kind of a task force uh, composed of the like a financial institutes and then a public financial institutes like a JBIC or Nexi or Jogmec and also like uh, industries. And we're gonna discuss uh, which kind of technology would be uh, uh, useful and effective uh, to support energy transition in Asia. So in that sense, uh, we're gonna uh, have a such kind of the community to discuss 
the actual criteria or principles. Thank you. Good. Um, uh, uh, Minister Kajiyama announced yesterday is for the ASEAN countries about the one trillion yen financing. Is this what uh, you say? Yeah, that's right. Um, actually, this Monday, uh, Mr. Kajima declared in the Japan ASEAN uh, Business Week. Uh, actually, this week is the uh, such kind of week. So the, the first day of the Japan ASEAN Business Week, he declared uh, this 80, uh, I mean, a Asian Energy Transition Initiatives. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, yes, and then uh, $10 billion financial support is kind of the core of the, our uh, initiatives. Mm -hmm. in a, to, but still, the gas has uh, the let's say carbon uh, emission, uh, even it is much less than coal. So eventually, uh, you know, we have to decarbonize uh, the gas uh, totally, right? So are you thinking about uh, using more hydrogen or as a cleaner source uh, or mixing or uh, co-firing of uh, hydrogen or ammonia uh, to reduce carbon emission in, in the next step? Or uh, are you thinking about, uh, let's say, uh, using CCS uh, for the, let's say, uh, carbon dioxide emission from the coal power plant in Asia? Or is, is you have some specific idea of the future total decarbonization? Thank you very much. Actually, uh, as Mr. Nagasan said, all these kind of the uh, possibilities will be, will have to be um, uh, materialized because we believe that, you know, we don't, we should not, you know, make coal, you know, uh, gas fire power plant as a stranded asset. In that sense, uh, we have, you know, uh, now, you know, experimenting about the co-firing hydrogen with the gas fire plants. And also we are exploring the possibility of the uh, CCS. And also uh, we are also, you know, <clears throat> producing the uh, kind of the uh, uh, clean energy uh, such as the uh, offset by the, uh, the other uh, like uh, frustration or like the other uh, CCS methods. So this kind of thing, we have to explore all the possibilities of how to use the LNG in the cleaner and also how to you know, make the gas fire plants not to be the stranded asset. Hmm. Very good, thank you very much. Okay, let's move to the next speaker. Um, Missy Yamashita uh, of the Japan uh, uh, Institute of Energy Economics in Japan. Uh, she is certainly the uh, energy experts uh, and who has, uh, I know for long, have a very good uh, capacity of telling us about the future prospects of uh, decarbonization. Um, please, uh, Yabashita-san, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much for opportunity to join this webinar. Uh, I would like to share uh, IEEJ outlook on energy and emissions to supply some flavor of global long-term picture. So we have two basic scenarios. One is a reference scenario where the world will keep the historical trend of things incorporating currently available technologies and policies in place. The other one is Advanced Technology Scenario, or ATS, where ambitious technology development and energy and environmental policies are assumed. In the figure on the right, in our reference scenario, you can see that MENA, China, ASEAN, and India all are expected to increase their use of natural gas into the future. In the left figure, more aggressive ATS is shown in real lines to be compared against dotted line reference scenario. Energy demand in ATS is 15% lower with all the fossil fuels to see peaks before 2050. Natural gas is shown in orange and it will be the last to see a peak at around 2040. As of 2050, the world will remain dependent on fossil fuels for 67% of the total demand. CO2 emission will be shown later in this presentation, but certainly we are not still not yet meeting the goal of 50% uh, uh, reduction by 2050, which is two degree goal. This slide is an outcome of analysis in 
2019 outlook about no new coal-fired power plants and its in it and its implication. We assume that there will be no new coal plants to be constructed in the world after 2020. Then we assumed all the countries will substitute it with replace it with the gas-fired power plants. Figures here show the implications of, to natural gas supply and LNG demand. As natural gas is imported as LNG to this part of the world, look at the right-hand figure. LNG demand will surge to three times the current level by 2030 if we ban new coal-fired power stations, and it may even surpass the sum of existing and under construction currently planned LNG supply capacity. This means that banning coal power plants has a huge impact on LNG market. Circular Carbon Economy, CCE, was introduced last year at G20. The idea is to utilize all available emissions reduction technologies by the four R steps, reduce, reuse, recycle, and remove. First and foremost is reduce. It is to reduce the amount of CO2 before emitted to the atmosphere, thus energy efficiency, use of clean energy, renewables or nuclear, as well as hydrogen and ammonia play the main role. Carbon circular economy aims at reducing CO2 after emission with remaining three errors, now, uh, namely reuse, recycle, and remove. Even after we burn and emit carbon, we can utilize CO2 with or without chemical conversion. This, these are reuse and recycle. Finally, to deal with emitted carbon, which enters the system, remove will take place. This includes CCS direct air capture or for forest sink. Our CC scenario assumes utmost adoptions of four R technologies for carbon neutral use of fossil fuels with all other assumptions based on the advanced technologies scenario. Let's see the impact of CC technologies. CO2 emissions are reduced by five gigatons from ATS and gets closer to the two degree optimized path. If you look on the right, while the share of fossil fuels of CC scenario is almost the same as ATS, the mix of fossil fuels shifts from coal and oil to natural gas as a primary feedstock of blue hydrogen. Net CO2 emissions are reduced due to CCS, while the consumption of fossil fuel remains almost unchanged. This is what we hope to see in the transitional process towards carbon neutral world, decarbonization of hydrocarbons. In conclusion, I would like to emphasize three points regarding the role of natural gas in energy transition. One, the natural gas is the most eco-friendly hydrocarbon and thus ideal as a transitional fuel. Secondly, it can even serve longer as a source to produce zero carbon hydrogen or ammonia. Lastly, such virtue of decarbonization of hydrocarbon can be extended to other fossil fuels. Therefore, natural gas is a door to circular carbon economy. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, uh, Yamashita-san, for a very, very good and convincing argument. And I fully agree with that gas will play uh, a role of transition fuel as well as possible source for blue or uh, blue hydrogen or blue ammonia. Well, that is the way I, I said I, I, in my opening, I said that the golden age of gas still continue if high, uh, gas can supply as a green source uh, for the conventional gas or coal uh, thermal power plant. So I cannot agree more. Um, on the other on the other hand, as you say in the let's say uh, in your uh, analysis, that if uh, coal power plant uh, are banned, that uh, let's say increase of uh, gas is enormous, especially in Asia. So, don't you think will there be a risk of uh, a short supply, which had happened uh, in winter this year, and the price uh, uh, of the spot? spot price of gas uh, jumped uh, uh, enormously. So uh, the, 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 there could be a tighter uh, supply demand situation if uh, you know, uh, this kind of uh, a big shift 
uh, could happen, and can we prepare for for that? That is another question which I will ask the suppliers or users. In, but is there any analysis in IEJ about this uh, supply security risk? Of gas? Well, actually, that was one of our conclusions uh, on that uh, coal, no coal-fired power plant uh, analysis. Uh, we have actually uh, tried to warn the suppliers uh, that the uh, new supply or new resource will not come by in 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 short term. It normally takes at least six years to ten years uh, for the new uh, capacity to be developed, ready to be supplied and shipped to Asian market. And then also engineering companies or you know the workers, even the laborers, are not readily available to develop such a huge new addition uh, to the market. So uh, exactly that was the conclusion we wanted to share uh, with the rest of the world, especially the financial sector, which seemed to be in a haste to push, put pressure uniquely or equally, uh, sorry, the universally uh, to all around the world, not necessarily be aware of the situation, the real situ actual situation in Asia. Very good. Um, and also, I remember that uh, uh, IEJ is also interested in using uh, the uh, blue hydrogen or blue ammonia uh, from uh, Saudi Arabia. I think uh, there's a project uh, which Saudi Aramco is now moving about uh, how to use uh, the fossil fuel sources with CCS. Uh, is the project moving? That is a very, very interesting and important for the uh, oil and gas producers in the Middle East. Yeah, it was successfully, uh, the, the first shipment was successfully done and reached Japan. And then I, uh, I am uh, uh, aware that there are several uh, uh, power plants which are already utilizing the ammonia to see uh, how it works. And there are companies which are trying out even the 100% ammonia, uh, hoping to try out the 100% ammonia uh, fired uh, power plant. So um, it, it is one uh, thing which we have been doing with the Saudi Aramco, but uh, our project will continue for the coming years to uh, investigate uh, more opportunities with the South, some other uh, things. Um, we are also talking with the uh, United uh, United Arab Emirates, uh, which is also interested in developing uh, their hydrocarbons into the uh, hydrogen or post potentially ammonia to carry it to the Asian market. Hmm, very good. Uh, you are moving more to the actual, uh, let's say, business or business estimation or uh, calculation or analysis uh, for this green ammonia or blue ammonia. That is very interesting. By the way, uh, IEJ is most, uh, let's say, uh, knowledgeable and famous and uh, in, the, in the global, uh, let's say, energy economics, that you are the one of the best uh, research institute. Um, <laughs> and uh, IEA recently announced a shocking report called Net Zero Emission by 2050 Roadmap. And uh, I quoted it in the, uh, my opening statement that, uh, you know, Fatih Birol said, we, I mean, the energy sector no longer need any new project for oil and gas and coal uh, if uh, net zero emissions should happen. What do you think about this uh, analysis uh, as a prominent energy institute? Is this <laughs> realistic or this is stupid or this is what? <laughs> okay, thank you very much for this question. Um, the Well, if is important here. The First of all, I feel uh, this report is a pure technical answer to the political question of pledges. IEA avoided uh, getting trapped in judging any announcements, but simply reminded those countries whose readers have pledged uh, for carbon neutrality or net zero that if such, if, such targets are to be realized, they must follow a certain very narrow roadmap, and such as the one described in its uh, report. This exercise shows that IEA's standard scenario, the step stated policy scenario or APC announced pledge case of 44 countries and AEC, or 
uh, those are not sufficient to meet, meet the uh, net zero target. I am sure the modeling exercise has been carefully uh, executed in a so-called backcasting approach, uh, where the uh, carbon neutrality or net zero uh, is uh, assumed by 2050. So for those objectives to be reached, the IEA is providing the world a rather impressive shopping list of actions uh, to take soon, if not now. And journalists picked up more shocking and appealing items from this shopping list and reported the other day, such as immediate stoppage of upstream investments on the uh, even on gas. Just as a few examples of political decisions to be made soon, if this, if we think about this backcast approach, when should the production and sales of combustion engines to be officially stopped? Meaning uh, all new car sales has to be electric vehicles. How many new nuclear reactors do we need? Or when should we stop upstream investment of fossil fuels? Of course, the world is more complicated and that the, the and that the cannot always follow the simplistic logic to make all goals compatible. So therefore, the challenge each country is facing is to develop and announce how to address and deliver on pledges. Imagine your kids begging you to have a new dog in the family. Big promises are made before they get a dog. We will feed, we will walk the dog, and we will clean the pan. But eventually, the kids start to see that obligations come with the new dog is overwhelming and more than the early proudness of ownership. Kids may let adults to do the heavy work, but what we are asked now uh, this pledge, we need to understand that all of us need to be aware of the weight it carries and solu find solutions to reach the goal. So, of course, the IEA roadmap is one of one of possibly uh, possibly many others that could lead us to the finish line. So, so it's one of them, and we should thank IEA for this courage. Thank you, Amashita san Do you have a dog or do you have a kid? I have a kid. <laughs> I have kids. Not dog. Not, <laughs> not dog, a dog. Yeah. They didn't. They are. They. They are wise enough not to ask for it. I suppose. <laughs> okay. Well, very interesting. Thank you very much for You're a very welcome. good answer. <laughs> um, let's move to Atsunori Takeuchi-san, Executive Officer of uh, LNG Optimization and Trading Department of Tokyo Gas. Okay. Thank you, uh, Tanaka-san, for introducing me. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. I'm Atsunori Takeuchi of Tokyo Gas. Speaking myself briefly from 2009 to 2013, when I was located in Malaysia, I used to give presentations and CWC conferences about seven or eight times, if I'm not mistaken, both in Singapore and Sydney. So eight years have passed since I participated in my last conference held by TWC. And finally, I came back to LNG business again. So this is a memorable moment for me with CWC. So now I'd like to say thank you for inviting me to this esteemed webinar. Okay, as you know, as the LNG market continues to expand and is projected to exceed 500 million tons in 2030, Although domestic demand in Japan is predicted to stay almost flat, global energy demand is expected to rise, especially in Asia. Japan faces many issues in addition to COVID-19. These include acceleration of efforts to achieve net zero carbon emissions. These factors increase demand volatility and uncertainty. However, even as the introduction of a renewable energy expands, we still need to maintain a certain level of thermal power generation to ensure stable power supply. Clean LNG is expected to continue playing a key role as the best partner for renewable energy. The report of the METI published, published in May 2021, this month, uh, points out that many innovations are still needed for achieving carbon neutrality by 2050. The report affirms that amid this great uncertainty, 
And the importance of fossil fuels, including oil and natural gas, is unlikely to change, as the Soda Sun mentioned. In 2019, Tokyo Gas announced its group management vision. It set a direction for expanding the volumes of natural gas we handle and moving toward an edge zero. Finally, I'd like to talk about the energy trading. And to improve price competitiveness, supply security, and the flexibility in quantities, Tokyo Gas is diversifying in three areas, supply source, contract terms, and business flow through establishment of a global energy network. In September 2020, we established TG Global Trading Company to expand the energy trading business by maximizing and optimizing TG Group assets, such as storage tanks, LNG vessels, and LNG sales and purchase agreements. Looking ahead to 2030, we plan on further expansions of LNG trading. By 2030, we aim to expand the volume of natural gas handled by Tokyo Gas to 20 million tons and tra trading volume to 5 million tons. I would like to give an overview of our net zero initiatives. Uh, in November 2019, we became the first utility company in Japan to announce a policy towards decarbonization. In the mid to long term, we will combine various initiatives to meet the challenge of net zero CO2 emissions in the future. However, in the short term, we believe that combining natural gas with renewable energy is a realistic solution that will bring us closer to a decarbonized society. And rigorous low carbon initiatives are the immediate, immediate priority. We believe that CN report showed as one method of making progress in the energy transition phase. Tokyo Gas decided to receive its first CNL from Shell in June 2019. We then started from proposing CNL to customers with a focus on those with high levels of environmental awareness. In October 2019, we concluded Japan's first basic agreement on supply of carbon neutral city gas with Marunouchi Heat Supply Company. The CNL Buyers Alliance, consisting of 15 companies, was established in March 2021. And this alliance aims to contribute to the realization of a carbon neutral society. It's, it seeks to raise awareness of CNL in society uh, through promotional activities and to improve its evaluation by institutional investors. It also seeks to and promote the re recognition of GNL in Japan's environmental laws and systems. And these are examples of voluntary private sector initiatives. Since we are the dawn, dawn of CNL uses, 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 it's important for the private sector to voluntarily conduct advocacy and business expansion activities. Let me briefly summarize my presentation. Countries and companies are making uh, decarbonization efforts. Tokyo Gas believes that it's important to achieve net zero on both the demand and supply sides. By expanding volumes on energy handled, we will strive to boost resilience in procurement and strengthen our management base. At the same time, we work with our customers to meet the challenge of future and decarbonization. I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Takeuta. This is very, very interesting presentation and uh, your ambition for this green uh, carbon neutral uh, LNG and uh, buyers alliance is certainly a very much uh, of interest to anybody. I think, uh, uh, can you elaborate on how to make uh, carbon neutral LNG by by what? I mean, uh, how to decarbonize LNG? Okay, thank you. Good question. Uh, I think uh, so. Now we are uh, still under marketing uh, phase of carbon neutral LNG, and uh, so 
Now we are making efforts to uh, introduce uh, carbon neutrality. And so uh, now we are promoting carbon neutrality from the upstream side to the midstream to downstream. Uh, all of the chain of energy, we offset carbon uh, emissions uh, and uh, sell to customers. So I, see. Uh, I think uh, Tokyo Gas will meet the challenge of net zero CO2 emissions mm -hmm. is a mid to long term objective. And the process will combine various initiatives in fields, including renewable energy sources, uh, hydrogen, and the methanation, and the carbon capture, utilization, and storage. And in the short term, combining natural gas with renewable energy is a realistic solution that will bring us closer to decarbonized society. And the carbon neutral energy is one of our uh, PR points. Very interesting. Um, yes, uh, I think uh, Tokyo Gas announced a carbon neutral by 2050. Is that right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so, 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 this is going to play a very, very important role. And, uh, uh, but as you say, in, in the short term, certainly the uh, LNG or gas is the bridge source. But how long? How uh, until what time do you think that the gas is the bridge? <laughs> and, and then eventually be moved toward the, let's say, hydrogen or green ammonia or something else, or methanation. Uh, how, 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 what, this is a somewhat interesting question. We, when, when the peak demand of gas as such is coming? Yeah, yeah, I hope it continues eternally. But uh, I think this is a good question. That, uh, and a big, big discussion for even for my company. And uh, we're talking about at least uh, until 230 to 240 uh, uh, natural gas and city gas will be, uh, uh, will play an important role uh, with regards to uh, transition or conversion uh, energy like. Uh, substitute of coal or oil or whatever. So, because uh, natural gas is a clean energy among uh, every fossil fuels. So, I think, I, I don't know if after, uh, even after 250, uh, natural gas, uh, it will uh, remain uh, as a CCUS, a capture capture system or and then a methanation system will be developed and the city gas or natural gas might uh, prolong uh, to uh, uh, live uh, after, even after 250 or 260 uh, but we are trying to uh, develop the new uh, uh, new way of uh, Supplying uh, natural gas or methane, methane or propane or uh, something. So, but uh, uh, it's hard to say how long will it be a bridge. So, uh, at least uh, by 240, it might be a be, uh, important or this is my opinion. Sorry for uh, Thank you. your, your question. No, no, it's, was very uh, it's tough. A Okay. Yes, <laughs> I'm famous <laughs> for asking the tough questions, so sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no problem. Uh, 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 also, uh, for for get the you know carbon neutral energy, you need uh, I mean a kind of uh, disclosure or verification of carbon neutrality. How how could you make sure that uh, of, for example offsetting? How how you. Uh, convinced that uh, you know in, in this LNG cargo is offset by uh, certain let's say uh, you know, the afforestation or plantation or dark or CCS is some kind of uh, evidence is needed. Is is there the kind of standard uh, or a regulation or some kind of uh, uh, let's say unified methodologies now under development? Uh, thank you. And uh, we are not uh, based on uh, official one, and uh, but uh, 
we, we are asking about uh, verification for private companies. Uh, and uh, Fiji is famous for a verification and certificate of carbon neutrality. So uh, credibility is important. So we are asking the famous company for verification. Mm. But not the governmental one, uh, private. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, sooner or later, that uh, if European Union is moving toward this uh, coordinating taxonomy of sustainability, this kind of, uh, let's say, uh, standardization of uh, sustainable uh, uh, gas is uh, coming as a, a major issue uh, for adjusting the border uh, difference of uh, the sustainability. But anyway, thank you very much, uh, Takeuchi-san, for your elaboration of the future of uh, clean and carbon neutral uh, gas. Let's uh, move to Nishizawa-san, Executive Officer of Senior Operating Officer uh, of uh, JERA. Please, the floor is yours. Anaka-san, thank you for the introduction. And uh, I'm very grateful for being here in this kind of very good occasion. Uh, I'd like to start with JERA's initiatives for decarbonization. In October the last year, JERA announced JERA zero CO2 emissions to 2050. JERA will take on the challenge of achieving by 2050, virtually zero CO2 emissions from JERA's operations in Japan and overseas. For doing so, we take three approaches shown here. Firstly, a combination of renewable energy and zero CO2 emission thermal power generation. Secondly, roadmaps that show optimal solutions for each country and region. Thirdly, a combination of technologies that are available and reliable at the time adoption decisions are made. As for achieving zero CO2 emissions in thermal power generation, we will conduct three measures, namely shutting down of inefficient coal power plants, coal firing with ammonia, and coal firing with hydrogen. For our domestic business in Japan, we established a roadmap towards zero CO2 emissions 2050. Here's the one for the period until 2030. JR will, by 2030, shut down all inefficient coal power plants and also conduct demonstration tests of coal firing of ammonia at high efficiency coal power plants. As for gas fired power stations, we will work on resolving technical issues regarding coal firing with hydrogen. The use of CO2 free energy is also being considered. By doing those, we will re reduce carbon emission intensity of thermal power plants by 20% from the government set standard. Then here's the one for the period beyond 2030 and to 2050. During 2030s, in terms of coal firing with ammonia at efficient coal plants, we will increase coal firing rate to 100% ammonia in the 2040s. As for gas fired power stations, we will start full scale operation of coal firing with hydrogen and then gradually expand the coal firing rate. By doing so, by 2050, we will achieve zero CO2 emissions. But remaining CO2 emissions from power plants using fossil fuels, if any, will be offset using offset technology or by CO2 free LNG. Yeah, next slide, please. In decarbonization, energy power will play an ind indispensable role. We need to think about not only Japan, but also growth of Asia. This is a point we are for zero CO2 emission thermal power. The first thing to be made is the shift from inefficient coal to gas in a steady manner. It, it may work as an important factor to increase the volume of energy. Of course, we need to evaluate net impact of decarbonization in energy volume, but for the near term, I would say the positive impact will prevail. Meanwhile, increase of renewables will amplify the demand volatility of energy further. As we saw in the last winter, depending on the weather, energy demand may significantly vary in a very short time frame. 
Therefore, the Asian energy market shall be able to manage both increasing overall volume and increasing volatility. For the stability of energy market, all the relevant parties, not only businesses, but also governments and authorities, shall cooperate and work on every measures, including short-term ones or mid- and long-term ones. For sufficing demand growth in Asia, new FIDs shall continue to be made. Supportive stance of financing sector is one of the important keys for this suspect. And for managing the increasing volatility, market liquidity is getting even more crucial. We need to build more liquidity in the Asian spot market and for making it, more contractual flexibility is important. Also, we will utilize JERA global markets, our trading arm in Singapore, to facilitate more liquidity. I would like to stop here as my initial uh, presentation for today. Thank you very much for the patience. Thank you, Nishizawa-san. Very good presentation. And I certainly think that uh, uh, the JERA's announcement of carbon neutrality by 2050 uh, using uh, uh, ammonia, uh, green ammonia uh, in uh, coal thermal power plant is uh, really a game changer uh, of uh, the discussion in Japan uh, for decarbonization. Uh, what, what, what is the challenge uh, for your company to achieve this uh, ammonia use of the clean ammonia or uh, clean hydrogen uh, in the thermal power plant in, 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 in the future? Is it a technical or technology or is there some other economy or cost or is it, what is the challenge for you? Maybe uh, this is uh, true for the, uh, any strategy or policy for the zero emission, both technical and uh, economical challenges are there and uh, we need to overcome those challenges. So dear, for ammonia, actually dear, uh, in this Monday, in this week, we just dear, uh, announced the uh, demonstration test project for ammonia coal firing at the uh, large scale coal fired power plants. Uh, in this year, uh, within this financial year, uh, we are going to have the year, a small scale test for uh, making the uh, better idea, uh, the idea about the uh, banner for uh, demonstration test. And then in the year fiscal year 2024, uh, we are going to conduct the uh, co firing of the year ammonia uh, in the year, uh, 20% uh, rate level uh, in the large, small, uh, large scale power plants. Uh, this is going to be the year, you know, first here, uh, big scale uh, and test demonstration test. So actually here for ammonia, uh, such level of the co-firing, uh, which is 20% is technical, technically feasible and we can make it. Uh, so uh, our challenge is for the ammonia side is here, uh, we need to increase such co-firing rate from 20% to 100% in the, in the end. So uh, we are, of course, they are going to have some challenges for uh, that aspect in the technicality. It's just, just always, always a case for uh, any uh, development. And for uh, the hydrogen, actually, we need to start with the uh, resolving technical issues for the carrier of hydrogen. So uh, there are several options of the uh, carrier of hydrogen. Uh, actually, the ammonia is one of the candidates, but uh, we have some other uh, candidates. So, uh, firstly, we need to conduct the uh, technical study as to uh, the career, uh, including the pros and cons of the technical side and the economical side, uh, as to uh, find which would be the uh, actual the uh, career for the uh, journey, and also the for the economical sense. Uh, that is a very uh, challenging one. So uh, we need to secure uh, the good uh, economy over the year, uh, those ammonia and hydrogen uh, for making it uh, actually realized. So uh, this is the uh, very challenging, but we need to make it. 
and uh, uh, we are going to conduct your uh, technical development uh, as alone and uh, with your uh, cooperation with your uh, various your, uh, authority or companies to overcome such challenge. So uh, we are going to the, uh, make the uh, good contribution for the decarbonization for this journey. Thank you. Very, very good. Uh, 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 and you mentioned about uh, that. Uh, uh, also, this kind of technology uh, uh, could could be utilized in Asia. How, how is there any uh, project going on uh, that uh, co-firing of ammonia or co-firing of hydrogen in the Asian thermal power plant is? Is under consideration, or is there some kind of consultation from Asian countries for your company to do something together? Uh, this is something we need to cons uh, discuss here uh, from now on. And uh, uh, actually, uh, it may be uh, premature to say something about the uh, uh, such kind of cooperation at this year, uh, stage in a specific manner. But anyway, here uh, with the uh, some partnering. Uh, uh, we would like to uh, pursue uh, such kind of the uh, opportunities. Uh, this is the uh, important part for making the, uh, this the roadmap uh, applied for the uh, Asian countries as well. As uh, uh, Takeuchi san of Tokyo Gas mentioned about this carbon neutral LNG. Is Jera interested in, you know, uh, uh, joining this kind of carbon neutrality of the LNG importation? Actually, there's for the carbon neutrality, carbon neutral energy. Uh, we understand that is the uh, one uh, option for making the energy itself carbon neutral. And actually, the, uh, we, our entity, uh, Jera Global Market, uh, made the uh, actual sales of the carbon neutral energy to India in mm. 2019. That was the actually one of the first one uh, in the market. And uh, uh, well, uh, of course, the uh, for making the this journey, uh, carbon neutrality, uh, carbon neutral energy is one of the uh, good option. So uh, maybe first read here, uh, we need to see what. Is the uh, customer's requirement? What is the uh, aspiration of our customer? And uh, we need to think about uh, how to respond to such the aspiration or desire uh, from our customer. So, uh, first video, we need to uh, assess uh, the, uh, the requirement or desire, and uh, we need to consider in what kind of manner uh, we can respond to such. Uh, such the desire or requirement. So uh, maybe for the carbon neutral uh, energy, the important thing is the, uh, we need to have the concrete unified mechanism or uh, social system uh, to evaluate. And I mean, in other words, the measurement, uh, reporting or verification uh, in the unified and the established manner in the industry. Uh, I would say the uh, such unified established uh, global standard for uh, carbon neutral energy is not yet there in the market. So uh, important thing uh, for uh, this thing, uh, carbon neutral energy is the uh, need to work in a cooperative manner uh, to establish such standard, uh, which is fair and reasonable and uh, uh, justifiable. Uh, and workable. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. This is some very good uh, 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 express, explanation. Let's move to uh, uh, to Katsumi Kuroda-san, of Senior Advisor of Sheniel Marketing. Uh, let's move to Kuroda-san uh, now. Thank you. Hi, Tanaka-san. Thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk about LNG in the low carbon uh, decarbonization energy market, taking the opportunity of DMG market. It is a you know, very good uh, for, uh, <clears throat> honor for Shenye to have a chance to talk about our plan and what we are trying to do. Um, I have just a uh, you know, couple of slides 
And I like to just focus on the three points. The first point is energy supply demand balance. What happened back in 2020, including the winter of early 2021, and how buyers and sellers should co uh, can or should cooperate or supporting with each other down the road. The second point is energy's role in the achieving net zero target. And the third point is uh, Japan's energy strategy and how can energy fit there down the road. In 2020, uh, it uh, demonstrated the resilience of energy. If we take a look at the uh, graph on the right-hand side, it is only energy demand of which increased in 2019 to 2020, according to IES data. And also, we were reminded that stable pricing and long-term contracts still have an important role to play the energy trade. And such volume still provides a foundation of volume and price stability to buyer's portfolio. And for that purpose, sellers need to ensure such supplies remain secure, flexible, and well-matched to buyer requirements. And at the same time, and on the other hand, buyers still need to support sellers' investment through the long-term commitments. And as we saw this big spike and the like uh, lower cost type of market in the winter, in order to avoid volatility and price spikes, buyers and sellers need to keep supporting each other. Probably everybody agrees to the, this concept, but uh, the difficult part is how we can do that. Is the energy role in the achieving, oh, sorry, yeah, and the achieving a net zero target. I totally agree to all the uh, <clears throat> speakers. Uh, Yamashita san touched upon that, of course, Soda san and Nishida san and uh, Takeuchi san. So, energy can and will have to still play a big role in achieving net zero target at uh, the eco friendly transition, long term transition fuel and improving the overall sustainability affordability and security of energy now and in the future. This is very important. So in a concrete manner, in the mature Asian market like Japan, Korea, and Taiwan, so energy can still enable renewables by the complementarity for uh, <clears throat> the uh, peak, peak shaving curve and also seasonal demand. And also co-burning of LNG with low carbon fuel, such as ammonia, offer the uh, material way forward. And in the emerging Asian markets, as everybody has uh, touched upon that, the so coal to gas switching is a clear avenue for early decarbonization in the power generation. But however, it is also very critical to lower the emissions intensity of the energy itself in its supply chain. So in that sense, we at Chenier have announced that we will provide cargo emission tag for the old cargos produced and shipped from our facilities from 2022 through the uh, uh, MRV, Measure, Report, and Verification System. And in that sense, we are still trying to uh, establish our own LCA life, uh, life cycle analysis model so that it, it can be uh, verified by the uh, peer. And also this April, uh, Chenier just supplied the first carbon neutral energy cargo to Shell. So, LNG has an important role to play as a fuel, including by working to reduce its own emissions intensity. So we keep uh, working to try to reduce our own uh, GHG emission intensity. Um, how LNG can fit the Japan's energy strategy? First of all, if we take a look back at the history, has LNG been providing a good solution to Japan's energy market? Of course, yes. In meeting growing energy demand from the uh, 1960s with its stable and clean supply. But at the same time, currently the context is changing a lot. So how can energy better fit into Japanese uh, current energy strategy? So we need at uh, some point stable pricing with low volatility and the supply flexibility to cope with the demand uncertainty by Japanese players and also lower emissions intensity, greater emission uh, transparency. And also uh, in, co uh, in line with the Japan strategy toward the Asia, so we need to uh, support commercial constructs to develop new Asian market. And 
a long-term and uh, reliable transition fuel for the net zero carbon in Japan and other regions. So Shenye will continue to innovate and work closely with its uh, the customers and stakeholders toward that goal. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Kuroda-san, very much for your uh, presentation. Um, yes, your three points are basically what uh, is the, uh, the uh, subject of the, this discussion. For this uh, volatility issues, and especially the, the, the spike of the uh, sudden demand because of the weather, Yes. Uh, is there any uh, an LNG is certainly uh, providing flexibility for the trade? Even the price sometimes uh, is volatile. Is there? Do you see that any kind of uh, uh, improvement or uh, measures to cope with uh, this volatility uh, in the supply side? Um, first of all. Uh... US LNG have the supply flexibility. So therefore, depending on the uh, demand of each region, maybe a big player like JERA and Tokyo Gas could optimize their position, bringing some to Asia and bringing some to Europe. So therefore, both sellers and buyers will have to uh, enlarge mm. their portfolio in order to avoid any spy unexpected spikes. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, having said so, the, our issue is the, uh, we have the different price, price indices in the different market. Mm -hmm. So therefore, there's no one size fits all. So this, we still have to keep uh, working between sellers and buyers. Mm. True. Um, and uh, basically, the US is based on, on the market uh, uh, pricing mechanism, and that is the strengths and future, uh, let's say, uh, contracts is on that basis. In this, uh, let's say, uh, net zero emission uh, uh, or clean, uh, let's say, the carbon neutral LNG, uh, is it is the method of you are using is the uh, carbon offsetting? Um, we have just done one cargo with Shell, and we still need to ascertain what kind of a mechanism is there, and also, as Nishizasa pointed out, how it works. So, therefore, this is very still early stage. And we are not yet in position to uh, comment as to whether we keep we'll keep doing okay. that on a continued basis or not. Oh, I so see. on the other hand, so, so it, mm -hmm. yes, please. No, no, go ahead. Yeah, in that sense, uh, we have just you know announced that we'll put or add cargo cargo emission tax to all of our cargos to uh, mm -hmm. advocate the uh, transparency of the data in the mm -hmm. states. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, the transparency is the first and, and, and starts to the customer as such. Um, uh, but so, sometimes I remember that uh, so, so to, cre uh, to produce LNG, an LNG facility it can also reduce the carbon emission, right? So, so, so that- Correct. Uh, that is also calculated in, 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 our, in your formula, right? Yes, indeed. So therefore, while we kept expanding, our uh, liquefaction capacity between 2016 and 19. Of course, uh, GHG emission itself kept increasing, but when it comes to uh, GHG emission intensity, we were able to keep uh, reducing it. And also methane emission is very, very marginal in that. So therefore we keep striving toward this kind of goal. How to measure the methane uh, leakage in, in, in the U.S. system? Because uh, it, it's sometimes I have heard that some European company withdraw the importing LNG because of the lack of accountability of uh, methane leakage. How, how can you mm. assess the amount we of cannot, methane you know, uh, We can't comment for uh, all the players, but uh, in our case, methane emission constitutes a very small fraction in our total GHG emission. This is uh, in 2019, it was about 0.79% of our total GHG emission. And of that, 0.1% uh, were the fugitive, and the balance was the just uh, <coughs> venting and so forth. I see. For the future uh, of the clean, uh, let's say, uh, fuel, uh, are you thinking about Moving from LNG to hydrogen or ammonia, clean ammonia, uh, you know, as a trader of these uh, clean fuels, or, or, or you are still waiting to see situation. 
Uh, we do not know that yet because uh, we are not able to uh, comment on plans for our carbon targets because you know we have not uh, you know set it up yet. I see. So, so but facilities but at the same time, of, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we keep uh, you know we keep a number of strides toward the goal of uh, mm -hmm. low you know lower carbon and decarbonization. And the hyd hydrogen or, or ammonia is a possible uh, option for the future. We do not uh, know that yet because hydrogen is very still mm -hmm. in its infancy, including uh, yeah. the production capacity and transportation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are not yet in position to comment anything on that. I see. But it all depends on the market and price and technology or, or, yeah. or, or regulation as such. Okay. Well, Thank you very much, uh, Kuroda-san. Thank you. Uh, uh, let's move to the last but not least, uh, Mr. Tom Earl, the Chief Commercial Officer of Venture Global LNG. The floor is yours. Well, th thank you, Tanaka-san. Um, thank you all. It's an honor um, to join the webinar uh, today, an honor for Venture Global, uh, particularly uh, at such a fascinating time and a key time for LNG uh, and LNG in the Asian energy transition. And it's also a, uh, an honor to be here to focus on Japan because Japan uh, has been at the heart, and even if we haven't said it very much over the last couple of years, Japan has been at the heart of Venture Global's innovation. Um, Japan provided uh, around a quarter of the project debt funding for Kalkashu Pass that uh, we can look at in, in just a few moments. So in fact, Japan was the largest Asian uh, financier uh, of Kalkashu Pass, more specifically Mizuho, uh, SMBC, and, and Nomura. And we're deeply grateful uh, for that uh, uh, Japan uh, support because it's been an important journey for the industry to see some particularly uh, dramatic innovation in LNG uh, at that project, at, at our project at Kalkashu Pass. So today we can provide you with a little bit of a, a progress uh, report of that uh, success of that Japanese support for LNG innovation. Uh, and we believe, uh, and as we've heard uh, already, I think, um, innovation will be at the heart of the transition, we think, of LNG and gas um, within that Asian energy transition. And Kalkashu Pass, along with our uh, key partners, Baker Hughes and Chart, um, has already broken many industry records that our supporters in Japan uh, can be deeply proud of supporting. Uh, records on safety, uh, on cost and on speed of construction. Uh, the first cargo uh, will leave uh, Kalkashu Pass uh, later this year in 2021, uh, almost uh, two, just two years after um, FID. So somewhat in contrast to the traditional timescales that we heard just earlier in the, in the session of five or six years. So today I think it's high time uh, to thank Japan for its trust and support as we've been successfully bringing this innovation and lower cost LNG to the world. Uh, so perhaps if we can just take a very quick look for uh, a minute, I think there is a drone video. If we can roll that video, um, this will give us uh, a, a, a very short, uh, but uh, hopefully succinct uh, set of images of, of Kalkashu Pass today. So there you see, looking towards Houston, um, the site as it is now. So somewhat, uh, uh, only two years since since FID. And what's important to, to, to really summarize just very briefly uh, from these images is this will be the world's first LNG site to use factory built trains. And there you see uh, the trains there in the, uh, you see eight of the first um, 18 trains that we're deploying. Um, these are faster to deploy, they're safer to deploy, they're less risky. Uh, and they're far lower, lower cost. So using 2,000 people on the site instead of 12,000 construction in two and a half years instead of uh, five years or six years, as we, as we heard earlier, earlier. And all of this achieved through using factory-built uh, trains, the first 18 trains being deployed there at Kalkashu, and then we'll move over to our second phase at Plaquemines directly after Kalkashu with trains 18 uh, through 36. And I think if I can say that, uh, the, why, why has this occurred, um, and, and certainly with the support of Japan, um, it's because lower cost in the energy transition is really going to matter. Um, lower cost LNG is going to compete much more effectively against coal, 
and help to make that transition um, from coal to gas. And we and, and hearing earlier, uh, I think it was incredibly poignant and timely. Um, as Soda Sam was saying, um, the conversion of coal to gas is the most effective, I think the word was, and realistic um, for Asia, and indeed contributing, uh, if that occurs, to seven, a 70% reduction of greenhouse gases uh, in, in Japan. And so we, 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 we think that uh, uh, that transition with the uh, use of LNG is the most effective way uh, or most effective path um, to reduce CO2 and particulate emissions and indeed to get onto that uh, one and a half uh, degree, scenario, degree C scenario. But in parallel uh, to that transition from coal to gas, uh, I think our, our, our perhaps our most important message alongside Japan um, uh, is this need for innovation um, and, and it's a humbling uh, process to be part of that innovation as the world's deploying, as we're deploying the first factory built uh, trains and dramatically reducing the cost of LNG, which in the end which should be a, uh, a huge benefit to uh, consumers of gas uh, for the years to come. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Earl Sam. I think uh, this, uh, uh, the, you have a kind of innovator of the LNG facility uh, uh, using the modularity, right? Modular system, right. as I understand. Um, and and uh, in a many complex uh, 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 plants, uh, the modular system is probably the answer to the many things. I mean, I, I, I am promoting the idea of small modular reactors. Nuclear reactors should be modular. The large scale light water reactor system is too complicated and costly and even the risk of uh, problem in uh, like Fukushima. So modularity certainly increase uh, the safety and uh, uh, stability and also predictability and reducing cost. In. So I'm really interested in hearing from you. Um, is this uh, system uh, of modular system is, uh, you mentioned about Kalkashi, but it's, is it going to be expanding to the other part of the world, not only in the US, but to the Asia or Australia or Canada? Is there, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, your business is expanding uh, to, to the uh, global market? Well, th th thank you, uh, Tanaka-san. I think um, your, your, your first comment about um, uh, the, the, the drawing a pa parallel there to nuclear is, is, is right uh, from the modularity. I mean, ours, uh, uh, what, what we've done is go a step further than modules and actually complete the train, the whole train in a factory. And that mm -hmm. follows uh, many other industries uh, that, that, that have done the same. And, and, we're, and we're perhaps others uh, like nuclear will go down the same road um, because if you if you move that complex construction into a factory you you control it in a much more effective way and it means that we've been able to um, as we've been building in factories we've been able to do parallel activities and save an enormous amount of time um, rather than have to wait to prepare all the site to in order to start building the train we started building the train the, tra the trains at the very same time as we were uh, constructing the site so enormous amount of time saved and interest costs in uh, financial interest costs in construction and so on. Um, so uh, we, uh, Calcasieu is the first 10 million ton phase. Um, it'll be followed by 20 million tons of placamines and then CP2 um, next to Calcasieu Pass with a further 20 million tons. And I think, um, although um, some might say, uh, or have said that, that um, it, it, you know, appears ambitious, um, it, it, you know, we saw earlier today just the, the, the scale of the growth that the world needs on LNG, um, uh, and uh, which I think Soda-san um, and Yamashita-san was, were, were, were showing on, on graphs. And that's why the, 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 we are doing what we're doing and, and, and producing at a lower cost um, and faster is what we're doing in order to answer that, that LNG demand that's coming. It is in, in this innovation, how you can cope with the request for cleaner or uh, non-carbon carbon free uh, LNG? Is, is, is there technologies in, in reducing the carbon footprint uh, 
through modularity? Um, I, I think the, 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 what, what's important at our uh, level on the, on, the, on the liquefaction plant level is to find every way possible uh, to, to reduce the, the, the carbon intensity of our, um, our segment. And then you, know, you were mentioning just, just a few minutes ago, um, the upstream segment um, will, will, will manage its own uh, uh, carbon intensity. Mm -hmm. But at, at the plant level, um, we, we will keep innovating in order to reduce our carbon intensity. And I think you'll see some announcements to, to come shortly on that from us. Um, but it's it it, it, it is um, there, there is uh, already technologies available to reduce carbon that's produced during the LNG the liquefaction process and 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 we'll keep working with our technology partners in order to um, to, to keep uh, focusing on decarbonizing our segment of the of the gas chain. Hmm. I I think you have very good uh, experience with the Japanese market. Of LNG, how how do you see the Japanese uh, LNG market? Uh, it's moving, uh, it's continuous to grow, or is there some problems? Because uh, it, because of this uh, prime minister's announcement in the last autumn, suddenly carbon neutrality is is a shock to everybody. Uh, uh, do you uh, have you changed your view about the Japanese demand because of this uh, uh, carbon neutrality announcement? Or not much. I, I um, well, I don't. I think I've changed. If I speak very frankly for a moment, I think I've, what I've changed my view on in the last, uh, let's say, weeks is the sheer scale of the of the difference between um, uh, presentations, very important data based, fact based presentations such as Soda Sands and Yamashita Sands today, and the importance of, of shifting, of, of moving from coal to gas, and the, the largest effect that has on, on the most realistic path that we have to reduce CO2. And yet um, what we read in the news and, and what, the, uh, what we read in the news cycles over the last two weeks, the gap between uh, what's being reported in the news and the realities that we face, uh, mm -hmm. that gap, it just I'm continually reminded how big that gap is and that and, and, and what a responsibility we have to try to close the gap between the, the, the realities of what's achievable and how to make the fastest, largest reduction of CO2 from the move from coal to gas um, and try to help the, the knowledge and understanding uh, of that uh, in, a, in a world where we, we read some particularly um, uh, 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 strange uh, newsprint. Uh, uh, and so I think that gap is what uh, um, <laughs> I changed my view on, but the, 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 need, the need to keep trying to uh, help the understanding of, 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 um, uh, that, we, that we can, of the, of the impact that gas can make, of course, alongside decarbonizing the gas chain where we can and keeping innovating where we can. Uh, and, 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 you know, Japan has been um, one of the world's greatest innovators and, and so we in technology and, and um, producers of the finest engineering. So, so I think um, it's a question of, um, of, of making sure that we keep innovating if at the same time we make this conversion from oil to gas, uh, from coal to gas. Very interesting. Um, also, are you doing some, um, let's say, research or technologies with the floating LNG? Is, do you think floating LNG is a kind of uh, modular system, but uh, on the ship? It's, it's totally different in a way uh, you are not interested in? I'm, um, it, it's, it's not that, not, I'm, not, it's not that um, I'm not interested or we're not interested in it. It's, it's that... Um, the, what's important with uh, achieving a low cost is is the is where you locate your facility. Um, mm -hmm. The beauty of factory built trains, if you've got the land available, uh, of which there is uh, thankfully and said in the humblest way, plenty of in Louisiana, right next to the gas pipelines, which have 
uh, a, a stable, low-cost resource of natural gas, as, as we've seen increasing in the past, uh, just in the last few months again. Um, so uh, the, the most efficient way to locate these factory completed trains in order to provide the lowest cost to the customers is to park it on, uh, on land next to those pipes. So I think I don't want to be seen as criticizing uh, floating LNG, but, but I think um, it, it's just a point of fact that to produce the lowest okay. cost of the land next to the pipelines. Is your modular system, or uh, is it, so certainly it's for the LNG? But if uh, the global market is moving toward uh, clean uh, ammonia or clean hydrogen, uh, is 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 a modularity or design can be applied to such uh, system of uh, you know uh, uh, generating hydrogen or generating ammonia uh, instead of LNG and export it. Uh, in, in, so, so, so you have in your mind of the future research toward uh, totally decarbonize, decarbonized uh, uh, the carb, uh, fuel as hydrogen well, or ammonia? Well, I, 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 on the specific point, I'm not aware of the application of, of um, for for hydrogen and ammonia with those with those trains, but. Um, I think um, what we see uh, in, in, the, in, in Europe, for example, uh, is that this, uh, the, 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 the very nascent uh, technologies of using hydrogen and ammonia are a very, very long way away from becoming scalable uh, and deployable. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, we're, I, I think, as you say, we're in the research era, uh, the research phase of those technologies and, and, and that innovation is important and should continue. But um, I, I, our view is that we are decades away from deploying those technologies effectively. And that's why um, we have to keep helping close this gap between what we see in the news and the realities of, of, um, of, of using LNG to, uh, uh, to, to, to provide the electrons uh, that the world needs in the, in the next two or three decades to for, for in that Asian energy transition, for example, and it's uh, it's a large responsibility. Okay, uh, Mr. Al, thank you very much for uh, your presentation and uh, answers to my uh, uh, questions. Well, we may have still some time, so maybe let's uh, move to the uh, question and answers from the audience. May I start with? Uh, uh, Soda san uh, of Meti. Sure. The, okay, question I uh, I I have from uh, the, some of the analysts is that uh, um, in the Japanese government, this uh, let's say energy transition uh, finance or support for. The LNG or uh, decarbonizing the let's say, industrial sectors is there a way for subsidizing developers in LNG and gas industry in Japan? Um, it's a little bit, you know, uh, complicated questions because the. Um, our, you know, the financial support, uh, which we, uh, our minister declared uh, this month, this Monday, as mainly the, the, the support for the uh, abroad, especially in Asia. But um, and also uh, we will expand the use of the financial support, not only the uh, LNG facilities, but also the other uh, decarbonizing technologies such as the renewables or uh, like uh, using ammonia or hydrogen or the other things. Um, however, you know, if the uh, these, how to say, uh, construction or of the, like uh, uh, in Asia, and it is, you know, uh, supported from the, like, uh, how to say, uh, domestic production, that would be also uh, the, uh, how to say, the target of the, our financial support, but, um, Mainly, uh, our financial support is focused on the like, uh, uh, energy and also like a decarbonization-rated facilities in 
uh, abroad, I mean, in, especially in Asia. Mm -hmm. And another question is that, uh, this is interesting, the, the, because of the uh, new efficiency target on the coal thermal power plant, or, which is going to be strengthened or enforced much more strictly, do you think uh, the more utilities in Japan will ramp up natural gas generation or natural gas usage? Actually, I believe it really depends on the uh, total share of the uh, fossil fuel power plants. And then if you know the share of the uh, fossil fuel power plants is decreasing, and then that's gonna be the, uh, even though you know, the, the share of energy power plants is uh, going up compared with the uh, coal power plants, but uh, the total share of the fossil fuel power plant is going down, I don't think that you know it's going to be uh, leads to the lump up the uh, gas generation. Does that make sense? So it really depends mm -hmm. on the total share of the uh, fossil fuel uh, power plants. Uh, okay. R rather than rather than coal gas, uh, uh, I would say replacement or shift. Just it's more the uh, total share of the fossil fuel. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, uh, how about uh, your view? What do you think about the IEA's recent net zero uh, by 2050 a roadmap? Um, do you have any view about the IEA? Japan is a very strong supporter of the IEA. Do you buy this roadmap? I think, you know, uh, IEA is also point, already you know, point out that um, uh, there is no single pathway to achieve the carbon uh, net zero. Uh, in that sense, we believe that this is only the one uh, pathway or one possibility that uh, IEA shows uh, to the world. However, I believe that in the, in the midst of such many you know, uncertainties to achieve the carbon neutrality by 2050, we believe that you know uh, the message uh, from the IEA, the watchdog of the stable oil supply in the world, has issued that you know, you know the no new oil and gas field uh, are necessary. Maybe you know give a wrong message to the market, and uh, in fact, mm -hmm. as Yamashita san mentioned, there has been the uh, newspaper uh, news article in Japan that uh, which says that new upstream development should be reduced to zero in order to achieve new, uh, in order to achieve net zero by 2050. This is completely, you know, uh, how do you say, misleading and misconfused by the, the, by the newspaper. So in that sense, I believe that, you know, uh, uh, I wanted to be IEA more like, a, how do you say, credible uh, uh, as always. Mm -hmm. So this is my mm -hmm. uh, answer to you. Okay, thank you, Soda san. Well, let's ask Yabashita san the next question. I mean, think, I think this is uh, also a question could be to Soda san, but maybe Yabashita san is in a better <laughs> position to answer. How would the government of Japan prefer to phase the transition to low carbon sources, including gas, over the next decade through 2030 or 2031? Yeah, I'm sure it, it is a question to be asked to the uh, uh, to Soda-san, but uh, I do my best to answer uh, without offending the process, uh, ongoing process, uh, because we are still in the middle of discussing this, so uh, it's not yet clear to any anybody in Japan uh, how the government uh, uh, try to to do so, but uh, we can I can remind you. Uh, there are several, uh, uh, how to say, the basic principles. Uh, one very major one is a 3E plus S, and then we are talking about actually nine years away, 2030. Um, so first of all, we need to maximize the use of already available clean energy, uh, which is um, namely the uh, energy efficiency improvement and um, uh, renewables and nuclear. Um, so we have to uh, utilize all these uh, uh, way of uh, uh, energy supply in a way because uh, energy efficiency improvement also reduces the total requirement. Um, but most of all, um, 
this is maybe it's it's my personal view, but um, uh, re restart the operation of uh, existing nuclear power plants is most important uh, so that we can actually fast forward our efforts uh, to start meeting the target in 2050. And of course, mm. uh, beyond 2030, we are not, we don't have enough uh, number of the nuclear power plants. So it should be also, uh, uh, how to say, uh, stated in the new basic uh, energy strategy that the uh, uh, replacement or new uh, installment of the uh, power, nuclear power plants is you know, important for Japan. Mm -hmm. um, maybe the uh, Tanaka-san's favorite uh, small modular reactor. Um, the Secondly, be, uh, because we are importing all the other energy sources aside from these three, uh, we, oh, we have to uh, diversify uh, these energies uh, from the point of view of uh, energy security. So the maintaining the diversity of the energy mix is another thing. I am still talking about nine years away, so it is like a very much um, uh, tomorrow. Um, the third thing is that the we should uh, also uh, strengthen the demand side measures, uh, including uh, lifestyle transition, uh, so that the everybody, all the citizens in Japan, uh, will be there to support this uh, very challenging uh, uh, movement or transition uh, towards the carbon neutrality. Mm -hmm. And lastly, but not leastly, uh, the, based on the green growth strategy, which was announced last year, uh, we have to actually accelerate the development of uh, innovative technologies and also uh, realize the huge cost reduction of these technologies so that it will be eventually uh, utilized to after 2030 actually to meet the carbon neutrality uh, target. So, well, including a little bit of my personal view, but uh, that will be uh, the principles uh, which we have to be aware of. Okay, thank you very much. We will soon see the new basic plan of the energy, so we will know the answer, but it's a very difficult, challenging one. Uh, Takeuchi-san, uh, there are some questions uh, for Tokyo Gas. Uh, will Tokyo Gas stance on long-term contract change based on climate change measures being introduced by various countries in the aim of redu reducing greenhouse gas emissions? Okay, uh, thank you for a nice question. Uh, let me try to answer. And Japan has in indicated that it will reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 46%. Uh, there have been suggestions that this is going too far. And natural gas has been regarded as easy to handle because it's a relatively environmentally friendly fossil fuel. Uh, even so, we understand that reductions are required. We will examine a reduction while also considering marketing risks. So we will determine our stance on long-term contracts, taking into account of a comprehensive view of overall demand, uh, Tokyo gas market share coverage, etc. I hope I answered your question. Mm -hmm. Also, there is question about your uh, long term, I mean, after the, let's say, expiring the long term contract, current long term contract, uh, when are you going to renegotiate uh, uh, the, the contract? Uh, you will take the oil index pricing or destination restriction closes. What is the Tokyo gas uh, policy, if you have any? Uh, it's a good but tough question, so let me try to answer. Uh, to improve price competitiveness, supply security and flexibility in quantities, Tokyo Gas diversified in three areas. Uh, three areas is supply source, uh, contract terms, and the business flow through establishing of a global energy network. We are currently making efforts to raise our negotiating power with vendors. <coughs> Sorry, flexibility will be more important 
as demand uh, becomes more uncertain in the future. As for price indexes, a diversification will be important considering trends and needs on the energy demand side. Additionally, you know, spot basis uh, energy transactions have become more popular. The composition of spot energy in 2020 had just reached almost uh, 35% in 2020. Uh, considering this trend, spot, strip, or short-term contract will be more required by buyers. And simultaneously, uh, there might be long-term contracts in which spot index formula like JKM linked are built in 100% or uh, partially. This might be. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there are two more questions to Nishizawa-san of JERA. Uh, the first one is, how important is the carbon intensity of different sources of LNG? And are you concerned about the emission intensity of your project in Australia? Okay, thank you for the question. So, uh, maybe also the LNG has been considered as the uh, low, uh, low carbon, clean fuel in comparison to the other uh, fossil fuels. So, but even for such energy uh, in these days, the, uh, the decarbonization and the cleaner, uh, lower carbon intensity has been required for energy. So in such sense, the uh, carbon intensity of a supply chain will become uh, one criteria for not only for the procurement, but for the investment. Uh, so we need to consider uh, such uh, combo intensity as one criteria, uh, that's what I think. But uh, for in this panel, uh, maybe I should refrain from any specific source or <laughs> country uh, about the, I mean, uh, how to think about. But the, uh, maybe for each project or uh, each country, uh they are thinking about the carbon intensity of its own project and how to deal with it. So uh, we need to evaluate uh, such e countermeasures for uh, carbon intensity, what uh, that they think, and that should be considered uh, for the evaluation as well. That's what I saw, I think. Okay. The final question to Nishizawa is that uh, is the JERA uh, play a certain role in the transformation of uh, uh, Asian uh, uh, gas players, uh, you know, uh, 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 more carbon neutral uh, uh, 2050, uh, and, and uh, especially in the case of Bangladesh, they say, is uh, JERA. Uh, thinking up about uh, using the important uh, impact as the uh, largest procurer or uh, of the LNG and also the innovation for the decarbonization ideas for the future. Thank you for the question as well, and uh, uh, maybe from Bangladesh and uh, uh, Asian countries in general, uh, including Bangladesh. Uh, they're a very important area uh, for uh, global energy, especially for the uh, energy demand uh, for the coming years and for the future. So uh, we need to think about, and they need to think about uh, how to decarbonize uh, each region or each country in a global sense. And um, we need to point out that we need to note recognize that the, uh, for each country or each region, the situation may vary. So uh, we need to think about the, uh, the proper, uh, reasonable uh, energy transition roadmap, depending upon and suitable for uh, each region or each country. So that's what uh, we are advocating to make the uh, roadmap for each country and uh, each region. So that's what uh, we should and we will uh, make 
consider for each country. Uh, so Thank you. for the time being, maybe here, anyway, here, uh, something like here, uh, it would do carbon intensity fuel, I mean, uh, introduction of the LNG may be the one uh, important uh, factor part for such a map. That's what I think. Well, thank you very much for all the, uh, let's say, uh, introduction and questions and answers. And uh, it covers a uh, lot of the new uh, issues of uh, decarbonization of the gas sector, but at the same time, innovations and new ideas, uh, uh, financial uh, mechanisms. Uh, the, uh, uh, and uh, I'm very much impressed that Japan is moving toward uh, new paradigm, and I still think, as I said uh, in my opening remarks, that the golden age of gas continues uh, toward uh, or by using the green or uh, blue hydrogen or blue ammonia, and the gas is a very important source to make this happen. And uh, thank you very much for the panelists, for the uh, very uh, great effort of your uh, answers and uh, ideas. And uh, I will uh, conclude the session. And next session will start after a short intermission. Thank you very much.
Tokyo Gas Group has been supplying city gas for 130 years. The natural gas that city gas is made from is one of the most environmentally friendly fossil fuels. It is cooled to minus 162 degrees Celsius, so it can be transported to Japan in the form of liquefied natural gas, LNG. LNG is unloaded and stored in tanks at four terminals. The LNG is turned back into a gas and odorized to make city gas. This is delivered via pipelines to 11 million customers in the greater Tokyo area, providing the energy that keeps homes, offices, and society going. The Supply Control Center controls the production and supply of gas. In the event of an emergency, such as a gas leak or accident, Gaslight 24 is dispatched to the scene in response. When there's an earthquake, intelligent gas meters and seismometers, called SI sensors, automatically shut off the gas supply. The Supply Control Center ascertains the state of damage in five minutes and can also shut off gas supplies remotely. If gas service is interrupted, arrangements are in place to enable gas utilities around the country to cooperate on recovery work to restore service as soon as possible. We have the most contracts of any of the new power producers and suppliers who have entered the fully deregulated electricity retail market. We are developing smart energy networks using cogeneration systems and promoting the wider adoption of any farms to help protect the environment and save energy too. We are also committed to developing our liquid gas business, residential services, engineering services, and urban development services, and to expanding our operations overseas. Continue to expect the best from Tokyo Gas Group as we deliver energy to bring new light into people's lives and communities.